In the vast expanse of Canada's grasslands lives a fierce predator with a gruesome reputation. No, it's not the prairie rattlesnake, or the coyote, or the swift fox. Think smaller and higher up. To many, this is one of the most feared predators in the world. What a rare sight. It is almost impossible to see these birds. This is the avian hellraiser, the butcher bird, the shrike. Hi, my name is Arania Iyer, and you are watching Animal Logic's World of Birds. Welcome to Grasslands National Park. We're here today to see the loggerhead shrike in action to learn how it earned its title, the butcher bird. You all know my co-host Daniel Dufo does all of the illustrations for Animal Logic. But what you might not know is that you can take home some of our artwork. Animal Logic is now offering tons of everyday products featuring some of Danielle's best illustrations. If you want to have something for your walls, then you should check out our Animal Logic montage poster. Something for your desk? Check out our mug featuring everyone's favorite bears. And our newest creation, Animal Logic Apparel. We have beautiful t shirts and hoodies, so you can rep Animal Logic wherever you go. With a huge variety of sizes and colors, you can find something perfect for you. Click the link in the description to see what we made for our fans. With the holiday season fast approaching, get the perfect gift for yourself or a loved one. Thanks for all your support! Loggerheads belong to a super species of birds in the Shrike family called butcher birds that terrorize prey throughout North America, Eurasia, and North Africa. There are upwards of two dozen different species of shrikes around the world. And while loggerhead shrikes are butcher birds, not all shrikes have earned the name. In the Northern Hemisphere and Africa, the name butcher bird is reserved for the shrikes that impale their prey on thorns and branches in order to store them to eat later. In Australia, there are two genera of birds that also impale their prey and are also nicknamed butcher birds, but they aren't closely related to the shrike family. Isn't taxonomy fun? There are many badass butcher birds in the world, with some of the most prolific being the Eurasian Great Grey Shrike, the Red-backed Shrike, and the deadly Iberian Shrike. But today, we're in Grasslands National Park in Saskatchewan, Canada to get up close and personal with one of the most bloodthirsty birds in North America, the loggerhead shrike. And suffice to say, I got pretty excited. No, you're f***ing kidding the me. Front. What the f***? Oh, the other one just flew away. Mm. Wow. Oh my god. Right behind me is one of the cutest predators of all time. It's the loggerhead shrike, also known as the butcher bird. It's doing its characteristic behavior. It is just hanging out on a branch, scanning the environment for its prey. It's actually in perfect habitat right now because one of the kookiest characteristics of this bird is that it takes its prey and impales them on sharp branches. And there are so many sharp branches around. There's just something about the quiet confidence of this bird as it looks out over the grassland, hunting, deciding who the next victim's gonna be. These little masked assassins live throughout North America, from central Canada to northern Mexico, with their range stretching between the Canadian tundra to the rainforests of southern Mexico. This is one of the smallest predators in all of North America. And it is a masked bandit. Like all the other 30 or so shrike species, butcher birds are carnivores. They are the most lethal of all passerine birds, the order that contains more than half of all the bird species in the world. Even though this bird's diet and behavior is like that of a raptor, the loggerhead shrike is not actually a bird of prey. It falls into the passerine family alongside traditional songbirds like finches or sparrows. Not sure how these two feel, though, about being grouped in with the guy who wants to eat them for breakfast. Some of the other deadly members of their family are the magpie shrike, which have perfected the art of looking like a killer goth bird, the tiger shrike, who's almost as ferocious as a tiger shark, and the long-tailed fiscal, who looks like the bird version of a mafia hitman. 
Butcher birds are just slightly larger than a house sparrow, but a whole lot deadlier. This bird is about the size of a robin, but it could take a robin. Oh, the other one just flew away. They are the kings and queens of their little world, and they rule it with ruthless brutality. When a shrike is on the prowl, small animals and insects cower in fear as they know their death is imminent, unavoidable, and will be excruciatingly painful. Shrikes prefer open grasslands with lots of sharp shrubs like hawthorns. They can use these pointed edges both as a perch and as a stake to put through their prey's hearts. Other structures like barbed wires and urban areas also serve a similar purpose for these tiny killers. Across all species of butcher birds, insects are the most common prey. But when invertebrates are hard to find, they'll go for something a bit larger. Lizards, rodents, and even other birds can fall victim to the butcher bird's bloodthirsty ways. Right now, it's surrounded by a lot of sagebrush, over which there's a lot of insects. So once it finds a nice, juicy insect, it'll fly off from its perch, bring it back, and possibly impale it to totally kill it before it digests it. Butcher birds are also known as the Batman bird due to their mask and ultra-violent tendencies. Except, unlike Batman, butcher birds have no issue killing things. Like, at all. For example, when hunting for flying insects, they perform a move called hawking. They perch on a surface like a tree branch or a fence and scan the skies for beetles and other unfortunate boneless prey. Once they spot one, they make a beeline for it using their beaks as tomahawks, snapping them in half and eating them in mid-air. Unlike actual hawks, butcher birds don't have powerful talons, so an aerial meal is often easier than carrying prey back to their perch. But when their prey is too heavy to snap in half, things take a turn for the ugly. All right, time to get down to business. Let's talk about how these vicious killing machines incite terror into their prey's heart. Butcher birds, even with their powerful beaks, can't just decapitate their vertebrate prey like they do with insects. Instead, they turn into kamikazes. They use the force of gravity to gather speed and crash into the backs of unsuspecting birds, lizards, and rodents, slamming into their spines to stun them. In this regard, their hunting tactics are closer to peregrine falcons than to hawks. So behind us is a loggerhead shrike and it's very clear to see its black and white wing pattern. It's honestly really mesmerizing, not just to us, but also to its prey. The loggerhead shrike uses that to its advantage, so it'll flash its wing in order to confuse prey right before it attacks it. Then they use their powerful jaws and the sharp part of their beak, called the tomial tooth, to fracture their prey's neck and paralyze it. One feature of the loggerhead shrike that I can see right now with my binoculars is their beak. They have incredibly specialized beak that are very sharp and very pointed. This allows them to stab their prey and even rip out their skeletal system to be able to totally paralyze it before it can eat it. These birds are small but fierce. <laughs> their reinforced necks protect them from the impacts of their dive bombing and give them a powerful bite. And when the feathered cannonball approach doesn't work, they do what every killer worth its salt does. They snap their prey's neck. Their disproportionate strength comes from the huge muscles in their neck and head. Loggerhead shrike is actually an apt name for this bird. The first part refers to its blocky head, which is disproportionately massive compared to the rest of its body. Shrike is in reference to the shrieking sound that it usually makes. These American butcher birds are literally named Big-Headed Yeller. No wonder they're so mad. And unfortunately for their prey, regardless of the species, butcher birds take out the brunt of that pent of aggression by snapping the prey's neck and impaling them. If you think that's metal, wait until you hear about how this miniature Count Dracula takes on prey its own size. Any guesses based on the nickname? 
knowing that their prey can potentially still be alive. The next step is to secure it to make sure it can't escape. The butcher bird carries its prey and impales it on a spike. It's like a bird Michael Myers. If the prey is miraculously still alive at this point, the impaling is the coup de grace. And with its food totally secure, the Shrike can finally dine in peace. Rest in peace, little mouse. These birds, these predators, give no shits. <laughs> they are literally just standing on the branch under no cover. And it's so easy to see them, plain as day. What do they have to fear when they're as scary as them? In some cases, prey is caught when the bird is not particularly hungry. But for butcher birds, killing is fun. And besides, extra food can always be impaled and saved for later. These caches are known as larders or pantries and are very useful during the winter and the mating season when energy expenditure is higher. This is how they got their name, the butcher bird, in the first place, since they're the only shrike that practice this larder technique, which is placing their meat on hooks like actual butchers. Both of these techniques are perfected with practice from a young age. Newly fledged loggerhead shrikes imitate behaviors like hawking or impaling without the actual prey. They even chase around their own parents to practice hunting. That's a whole new flavor of teenage angst. Despite their ruthless hunting behaviors, males of this species are generous lovers. In addition to traditional dancing displays during the breeding season, these males always keep their pantries stocked. Food caches like this indicate a male's resourcefulness. So we just see two shrikes sitting on top of a very pointy bush. The fact that we see two birds together and they're not fighting gives us a clue that they are probably a pair and that they've mated and that maybe there's a nest nearby. Once the pair has chosen to be with each other, the male will help the female build the nest. When she's incubating the eggs for about two weeks, he will bring over insects to feed her. Okay, listen, I know the bar for male birds is real low, but I think the loggerhead shrike is doing something right. The nests are built in thorny bushes, sometimes even in tumbleweeds. Don't worry, they do this before the plant becomes a spiky bowling ball. Though it would be fun if on top of being a stabby fire hazard, they were also a means of transportation for deadly butcher birds. The chicks hatch in the spring, weighing just three grams, about the same as a penny, but grow quickly thanks to all the protein that their metal as hell parents bring them. Though not all their offspring survive, and the parents, being as hardcore as they come, feed them to their surviving chicks. Brutal behavior, but at this point, I wouldn't expect any less. Their hyper-violent ways help them conquer most of the Northern Hemisphere, where they command an important position in their ecosystems, controlling, and terrifying, insect and rodent populations. Unfortunately, over the past century, things haven't gone too well for the butcher birds in my neck of the woods. The loggerhead shrike subpopulations of Western and Central North America are relatively stable, especially in comparison to the Eastern subpopulations, which are rapidly declining. We don't really know why their numbers are crashing, but signs point to habitat loss and pesticide contamination. The thorny shrubs where they used to nest have been replaced by farmland or residential areas. High human density also increases the chances for collisions with cars. In the United States, the eastern population has decreased by over 75% in the past 100 years, and in the whole of Canada, at their lowest point, there were only 35 mating pairs left in the wild. Loggerhead trikes are actually very similar to northern trikes, which are common in Ontario, but these birds, their range actually has been decreasing, and a lot of conservation efforts are going in to protect these birds, so it's really a treat to be able to see them right here, right now. Since 2003, Wildlife Preservation Canada has run a program to breed shrikes in captivity and release them in the wild. Over 800 shrikes have been released so far, and more than 50 of them have returned to make Canada their breeding grounds. Welcome back, little metal butcher birds. <laughs> I don't know about you, but this masked bandit has certainly stolen my heart. 
and impaled it in typical loggerhead fashion. So what should we talk about next? Let me know in the comments down below and don't forget to subscribe for new episodes every week. Keep soaring to new heights and I'll see you later. Bye! Do I hear a Cody? Do I hear a common nighthawk? I heard a beep. Sounds very much like a common nighthawk and we are getting close to dusk, which is when my British accent also comes out, which we can put away for now.